What's up guys? I'm Captain Billy Delft. Welcome to a typical day down here in Sugarloaf Key where we are actually gonna be pulling stone crab traps. It's one of my boys' favorite pastimes. We're gonna be showing you guys how to pull these traps, how to reset them. And at the end of it, we're gonna cook it with one of our favorite mustard sauces. You guys aren't gonna to wanna to miss this. Roy better get in the boat or he's not coming. Roy, come on, let's go. Sammy, you got the pig's feet? Yep. <laughs> find out how many times Roy is going to fall in the water today. Fall or pushed in? Wh which one? Come here. So we just got out here and the way that I am finding my traps or I'm finding the original line is I just look at my GPS because the last time that we set them out here we marked the beginning of the line and the end of the line. So all I did is just run to the end of the line. We're going to our first trap right now. Sammy's gonna hook the line with the gap and Daniel's gonna pull it up since he's a little bit stronger. And then we're gonna get right to business on these traps and pulling the crabs out, popping the claws off and then rebaiting. Boy, watch out. I hear some, ooh. You got some nice ones. You can see them hanging on the top right here. What was there, five? They're um, fighting. I don't know if I want to cook grab those right now. <laughs> <laughs> they're feisty. Normally they're not this uh, fired up, so we're going to grab this guy. Oh, is he, got, is he a so floater? Some of these crabs, after they molt, they take a little while to kind of harden up their shell and regrow the meat on the inside, and they'll just be weak. So you can see this guy's not even really struggling to fight me or anything at all, so he's probably a floater. Roy. <laughs> This is the gauge we use to measure the stone crab claw. You can see right here, it's gotta be no smaller than two and seven, seven eighths of an inch. So we measure them right here from the bottom knuckle, right there to the tip of the bottom claw. So you can see this guy is a little bit too small. So we're just gonna let him go. There we go. Oh, he almost got me. So this one right here, is a legal crab. We're gonna go ahead and take this one claw because obviously this one is too small. And then we're gonna throw the crab back so he can grow it back. It takes about, what, a season, Daniel? One to season. To grow him back? To grow back to legal size is one full season. You're gonna take this first knuckle, the second knuckle, the third, but this one right up against the, bot the carapace right here, you do not wanna break that because if you do, that's gonna be a dead crab. And obviously he's not gonna be able to be out there reproducing for the, for the next season. So what we wanna do, there's a very simple way you take the claws, you bend it forward a little bit, and then it's a twist kind of in a downward motion like that. And they should just easily pop it like that. A nice clean break, that's exactly what you want. This crab we're gonna go ahead and throw back in the water right now. So we got that claw off. The other one is obviously too small. We're gonna go ahead and toss this one back in the water. So now we're gonna go ahead and pull our bait out. And today we have pig's feet, which is a very common uh, bait to have down here. It's not, it's pretty simple. The butchers down here get rid of the pig's feet and it's a very good bait because of its toughness and how long it lasts in the trap. Sometimes we'll use fish heads, but the job of that pig's feet is just to smell for the rest of the week. We're gonna leave it out here for about one week and then we're gonna come out, pull them again and uh, so on and so forth. So here we go. Go ahead and shut the latches on it. Daniel, you pull them. Sammy, then rebate them after we pull the claws and we'll just keep running down this line and we'll. We'll pull them off. You ready? Yeah. Let's do it. Ooh, this one's got a ton of growth on it. Camel see what we got in here. Big one right there. Ooh, big boy. Obviously, this one's plenty big enough. You can see right here. That's a moose. Let's see how this smaller one is. Both of them make it. Go ahead and we can pull both of these claws here. Now, when you pull both crabs, it used to be the law and the belief that pulling both crabs was unethical. Um, because the crabs couldn't defend themselves and they would end up dying. But after doing a study, FWC found out that when you pull both crabs, the crabs are actually less likely to fight. They will bury themselves in the sand or just avoid fighting altogether. And there's no loss for crabs. So now the rule is you can actually take both claws. So now we do. There you go, clean release. You can see right here at the base, that last knuckle is still intact right here. So what'll happen in the next shed cycle, you actually see a little bud begin where another claw starts to grow, which is really cool because of all commercial fisheries, this is a totally renewable fishery. Get, get. Drop it. Oh my gosh, this dog is gonna be the death of me here. 
Roy, settle down. He thinks these things are balls for him or something. Looks like a good one in there, yeah, huh? Good one. Another big one right there. Let's keep adding to it. Ooh. Bait and redrop. So Davis, look what Sammy got. A seahorse was on the, the on the rope. rope. He was just holding on with his tail. He fell off. Look at all the hole. crabs in this one. The oh lucky seahorse. Look at that one. <laughs> look at that giant right there. What a catch, man. That is gonna be some good eating right there. Check out that. Oh my gosh, look at that beast. What a beast. <laughs> They're attacking each other. Ooh. Okay, I'm not doing that. <laughs> come on, go on, come on. Roy, get out of here, you're gonna get benched. Guess way higher. Are you pulling? I'm a, I'm, Six. Can I change my guess? Good. Don't pull away. Number eight, right there. Oh, we got one more in here hiding. Dude. Please grab him. <laughs> well, I don't want to grab him with a knife sticking through there. Just grab it. This is a this is a treacherous uh, thing you're asking me to do here, Daniel. Me and Sammy are gonna get sliced and diced. Oh, and pinched. Here we go. <laughs> so this is number nine for this trap. Here we go. Let's measure this one and see. Oh, that one makes it. Plenty good. So how many is that for this one? Ten. Ten claws. Here we go. Oh, here we go. Let's see, 10 pounds of stone crab at an average of 40. Market 40. price is $40 a pound right now. Realistically, yeah. That's $400 in stone crab if we can get 10 pounds. All right. Drop them. Oh, that's a big one. You see them? Yeah, hanging on the roof. There's a couple of them in there. Look at that little claw that he has. Yeah, too small. And this one's already, hold on, let's see if he's got buds on him. You see that little uh, claw starting to grow right there? Yeah. Not sure if you guys can pick that up, but that little bud right there is a new claw growing on that knuckle. And within a full season, that'll be a full-size claw ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and throw him back. It's a big one, but he's a floater. You can see he's all weak, flopping around. So, so floaters, when Daniel calls it a floater, what that means is when we throw all these claws in the pot to cook them, which you have to do because if you don't cook them and you put them in the refrigerator and, and uh, freeze them, the meat will stick to the actual shell and it's un you're unable to eat it. So we throw them in the pot and the ones that don't have meat in it actually float to the surface and commercially you're not able to sell them but even edibly, you can still eat them, but there's just not a lot of meat on it. So this guy right here is very hollow. He has big, beautiful claws, but no meat inside of him. So you know what? Let's just throw him back, let him go through his nat natural cycle, and we'll go on to the next one and uh, hopefully get some more big, good eating crabs here. Drop and pull, baby. Here, Daniel. All these traps pretty much have at least one big one. This thing is frightening. Maybe. Oh boy. Roy fell in the water. Roy, come here. <laughs> Roy, you want a crab? <laughs> oh, boy. Roy, what are you doing? Here, uh, drop this trap. Drop this trap and we'll, we'll pull another one. He's here. going for the boom. Get it, Roy. Come here. Get it. <laughs> Welcome to the clown show. Look Roy. at this guy here. Probably one of the worst swimming dogs on the internet. All right, Roy, come one. on. Roy, here. There you go. <laughs> oh, he grabbed me. I'm glad I had gloves. <laughs> Roy, he got me. Come on. Sammy, you ready? Yep. Go ahead and get it, buddy. Nice. The greenhorn is is turning into a, 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 a regular seasoned veteran here. Oh my gosh, look how big that one is. Oh my God. What a huge. chungus. Woo. Please don't get me. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold on. Look at the size of these guys here. There's two of them in there. They probably both. This one's too small. small. That's a nice claw right there. That's a colossal claw, claw right there. 
at Joe Stone Crab, these things this big sometimes go over $100 a pound. So this is, this is definitely some high dollar food and if you can get it, you will not be disappointed. These things are such good eating. There we go. Yeah, pop that one. Nice. What a beauty. There we go. Pops it out nice and easy. Decent little bucket right there. I think we got, we have we a contender. A, Is this a contender for ooh, first just place? There's a lot of big ones in here. What they're, do we got? They're all big. We got one, two, three, oh four, five big crabs. Look, look at that one's fall. Broken. Uh, maybe not. No, he's fighting. Let's do it. Oh, this one's too small. This oh, one's big enough. Oh. Wow, look at the claw. That one's super strong. Ready? All right. All right, guys. Well, I think that's our line here. We got a great haul. Check this out. What a, what a huge haul of claws we have here. Very nice. What do you think, Dale? Weigh that. Oh, yeah, that's... Think we got 10 pounds in there? Uh, I'd say we're probably eight, maybe a little more, closer to nine. That's probably close to five or $600 in claws in there, um, depending on where you're buying them. But I am super happy with that. That's a great haul. We had claws in every single trap. Let's get in right now and cook them up and show these guys how we do this. What do you say? You ready? Yeah, let's, let's do, do it. it. All right, welcome to Casa de Delph. We are back at the house. It's time to get these stone crab claws in this boiling pot of water. So when we cook our claws, the reason that we do it is so the meat inside, if you don't cook them, as soon as you catch them and bring them home, the meat will stick to the shell. So when we crack these shells open, it makes it almost impossible to eat uh, if you freeze it first or put it in the fridge or anything like that. So we gotta cook them first. Uh, the meat will kind of de detach from the shell. It makes it really easy to eat afterwards. We do that for about five minutes. And then uh, while that's being done, we're gonna go ahead and make our mustard sauce. It's a very simple mustard sauce. So if they're not covered, it's okay. The steam will cook the rest. Bring it to a rolling boil. We'll go ahead and put the lid on. Alexa, set the timer for five minutes. So while that's cooking here, let's go ahead and make our mustard sauce. It's pretty simple. I've seen people go crazy with these mustard sauces, throwing Worcestershire sauce in it, all kinds of things. The best sauce we've ever had, it's pretty simple. Coleman's dry mustard and mayo. Uh, we usually use the dry mustard, but we couldn't find it at the grocery store for some reason, so this stuff will work. It's pretty good. It's got a lot of bite to it, and uh, you mix it to taste, so. We're gonna go ahead, get this mayonnaise in here. I like it pretty sharp. Have a little bit of bite to it, so you mix that up. You can kind of tell by the color. It's a little bit yellow, you got it about right. All right, let's see what we got here. These guys are looking nice and red, exactly what you want. So we'll go ahead and put these guys in the strainer right now. So now it's time to crack these things. You want to be really careful. Throw a rag over these things so you can feel it. And the first whack is actually going to be right about here like this when you do it. Use a mallet or a small hammer or something like that. And uh, you want to pop it just hard enough that when you do it, it's just cracking the shell. It's not blowing it up. So you can feel it crack there. This one's actually a little bit of a floater, man kind of hollow. You can actually, it is a floater. Look at that. See how little meat is in that one? We were talking about those floaters earlier. Now let me, let me crack a whole one and I'll show you, I'll show you the difference here. You can actually, as you pull that apart, whew, and you can see how full that is. Here's a floater and here is a regular claw. Big chunk of meat. You can see the cartilage in this. It's, it, it's on either side. It's not stuck to the shell. And uh, these things are still piping hot. This is as good as it gets right here. Woohoo! Nice and hot. I'll dip it in that sauce. And this is it.
Oh my gosh. I don't normally eat them this hot and it's actually even better. Oh yeah, I highly recommend that. Boys, you wanna try it? Yeah, let me get one. Definitely wanna eat them warm for sure. Mm -hmm. Way better, right? Yeah. yeah, it's much better. All right guys, there you have it. Very simple, you get out there, get a trap, drop it for about a week with some pig's feet in it, pull it, and you cook them up. If you guys have any comments or questions, don't forget to drop them in the description below. If you guys wanna buy any merch, don't forget to check it out at blacktiph.com. Thank you all for watching another fun day down here in the Florida Keys, and we'll see you in the next one.